Hello everyone. Welcome to another lecture of the course Digital Signal Processing. In the previous lecture, we have looked at the decimation in time fast Fourier transform and decimation in frequency fast Fourier transform. So basically, both of the, these algorithms were allowing us to get the value of DFT that is x of k from the given time domain signal. So we are getting the time domain to frequency domain transformation using both of them structures. So the question that now arises is can we use a similar kind of structure for having the inverse discrete Fourier transform. So let us try to analyze that. So if we recall the derivation for the decimation in frequency fast Fourier transform, so we had started with this x of n that is the synthesis equation and then we had split it in two parts that is the even and odd part and then we had obtained it something like this and we then replaced this k by 2k by just uh, varying this new k by from 0 to n by 2 minus 1 with an assumption that we have n by 2 even values and n by 2 odd values. Whereas this odd part was represented as x of 2k plus 1 wn to the power n by 2 to the power minus k n and we had an another factor or the twiddle factor here that was wn to the power minus n. So this was the basic derivation that we had looked at for the decimation in frequency fast Fourier transform. So what we claim is we can use this equation or this structure for calculating the inverse TFT also. So this entire thing can be written something like this that is we have this n into x of n as these two summations which can be written as n into x of n is equal to this even part that is this summation here and this odd part that is x odd of n that is this summation here with a twiddle factor that is w n to the power minus n. Moreover we know that once we split this initial summation that is this initial n point equation then the range of this n changes from n to n by 2. So now this range of n is from 0 to n by 2 minus 1 and in order to find the next n by 2 values we had seen that we just need to add another factor to here to this point here that is plus n by 2. So we need to have plus n by 2 factor here so that we are able to find the values of x of n by 2, x of n by 2 plus 1 and so on that is the next n by 2 values. So now if we look at both of these equations so we have n into x of n that is x e of n plus w n to the power minus 1 x odd of n and n into x of n plus n by 2 is x e of n minus w n to the power minus n x odd of n. Now if we observe both of these equations, so both of them are similar to the equations of decimation in time that is DIT FFT. The only change that we have is in the twiddle factor. So if we recall the twiddle factor for this DIT FFT was WN to the power K but now in this case we are having WN to the power minus N. So this gives us an intuition that we can use the same structure as DIT FFT but with a sign change in the power of this twiddle factor. Moreover at the output we are not going to get x of n and x of n plus n by 2 but we are going to get a scaled version of x of n that is n into x of n and n into x of n plus n by 2. So let us try to look at this with an example and try to get whether we are going to obtain what we are having 
or what we are considering using some kind of intuition or some kind of observation so for that let us consider this x of k as 10 minus 2 plus j2 minus 2 minus 2 minus j2 and we had seen this as the dft of the signal 1 2 3 4 so we had considered this example in previous lectures for calculation of the dft using dit fft and dif fft and this was the value that we had obtained as its dft so now let us consider this as our input and we know that the value of n that we need to consider is 4 therefore the number of stages that we require would be given as log n to the base 2 so that comes out to be log 4 to the base 2 that is equal to 2 and we also know that the initial step is to perform the bit reversal therefore the step 1 so we are going to do exactly the same steps as dit fft but the only change which we are going to consider is in the twiddle factor and at the end we are going to obtain the value of n into x of n instead of x of n so as in normal dit fft we are going to first perform the bit reversal so we have the sequence as x of 0, x of 1, x of 2 and x of 3 and the values which of the number of stages that is the value of m which we have obtained so this is basically number of stages so the value of m is equal to 2 so therefore we are going to use the 2 bit representation so this argument is 0 which can be represented as 0 0 here the argument is 1 which can be represented as 0 1 here we have 2 which is in binary 1 0 and this 3 in binary is 1 1 once we do bit reversal this 0 0 remains as it is this 0 1 changes to 1 0 this 1 0 changes to 0 1 and this 1 1 changes to 1 1 so this 0 0 is 0 1 0 is 2 0 1 is 1 and 1 1 is 3 and therefore the new sequence that we need to consider is x of 0 x of 2 x of 1 and x of so the entire structure that we get for this inverse IDFT is something like this. So this is the structure with bit reversed form. So we have x of 0 as 10. Then we have x of 2 as minus 2. We have x of 1 as minus 2 plus j2 and x of 3 as minus 2 minus j2. We know that we as we are considering the structure similar to DIT FFT, the stage 1 would be a 2 point DFT. So the stage 1 would be 2 point dft and the twiddle factor would be varying from w2 to the power minus 0 and w2 to the power minus 0 whereas the stage 2 would be 4 point dft and we would be having the twiddle factor as wn to the power minus n and this so it would be w4 to the power minus n and this n would be varying from 0 to 1 so it is basically 4 by 2 minus 1 that is 2 by 2 and that is 2 minus 1 that is 1. So the value of n would be varying from 0 to 1. So same thing can be observed here. So the point here can be found by the addition of this 10 minus 2 into w2 to the power minus 0. So this w2 to the power minus 0 would be 1. So it is 10 minus 2 that comes out to be 8. Similarly, at this point we have 10 minus, in, minus 2 into minus 1. So that is basically 10 plus 2 that comes out to be 12. At this point we have minus 2 plus j2 minus 2 minus j2 multiplied by this factor here which is equal to 1. So the 
value that we obtain here is minus 4. Similarly, at this point, it is minus 2 plus j2 minus of minus 2 minus j2. So, here we obtain it as 4j. So, this is the output at the end of stage 1 and we are going to consider it as the input to the stage 2 and in stage 2 we need to consider the 4 point DFT and therefore we need to combine this 8 with this minus 4 and this 12 with this 4j and therefore the value that we obtain here would be 8 minus 4 into w4 to the power minus 0 which is the twiddle factor and the value is 1 so we have 8 minus 4 so we have 8 minus 4 that comes out to be 4 similarly at this point we need to combine this 12 and 4j so it is 12 plus 4j into w4 to the power minus 1 so we have it as w4 to the power minus 1 which can be written as e to the power minus j to pi by 4 whole to the power minus 1 which is equal to e to the power j pi by 2 which is equal to j. Therefore, the value of this w4 to the power minus 1 is equal to j and therefore at this point here sorry at this point here we have 12 plus 4j into j so that is 12 minus 4j so that comes out to be 8 that is 12 minus 4 that is equal to 8 similarly at this point here we have 8 multiplied by minus 4 8 minus 4 multiplied by minus 1 so we have a scaling factor of minus 1 here so it is 8 plus 4 that comes out to be 12 similarly at this point we have 12 minus 4j into j so that comes out to be 12 plus 16 uh, 12 plus 4 that comes out to be 16 so at the output here we are obtaining 4 8 12 16 so basically we have x of 1 and x of 2 like this so what we have obtained is 4 into x of n as a sequence 4 8 12 and 16 so if we scale both sides by 4 that is by the value of n so what we obtain is x of n as 1 2 3 4 where this 1 is located at 0 so what we observe here is we can use an identical structure or quite similar structure as DIT FFT in order to find the inverse discrete Fourier transform the changes that we have is the twiddle factor and this scaling factor at the output so in this lecture we saw that we have a similar structure and uh, for D as DIT FFT which can be used for the calculation of inverse discrete Fourier transform but when we are doing so we need to keep in mind certain things that is the there is a sign change in the power of this twiddle factor that is WN moreover we obtain the value of n into x of n and therefore in order to obtain this x of n we need to divide the entire thing by n or we just need to scale the sequence that we have obtained by n to the power minus 1. So let's stop here.